It's a pleasure for me to welcome you today at our workshop JSX Graph and the Moodle plugin formulas. Thank you, Alfred. My name is Andreas Walter and I'm a member of the JSX Graph team in Bayreuth for three years now, uh, quite a young member. My main work is the development of sketchometry and uh, also the JSX Graph Moodle filter. In this workshop, I will work together with our items project partners from Spain. And first of all, let's share my screen. First of all, I will give you a small overview view over the features of JSX Graph Moodle filter. We will have a look at the installation and the usage of our filter first. After that, Mark Bernard will show you uh, how to generate questions in Moodle with the filter and the question type formulas. And then you can try the filter yourself. You will be able to uh, authoring some questions yourself. And since I'm rep uh, responsible of the administration of this Zoom meeting, I have already recorded my lecture. And of course, I will be available for questions after the workshop live. Welcome to an introduction into the JSX Graph Moodle plugin. This filter is developed at the University of Bayreuth and is further continuously enhanced in an international exchange through the ITEMS project. The JSX Graph Moodle filter allows users to integrate JSX Graph constructions into Moodle courses. But how can we put a construction written in JavaScript commands of JSX Graph in a Moodle site? Of course, you easily could open the HTML view of your editor and put there the JavaScript code within a script tag. Then you need a div with a specific ID and you have to load the JSX Graph core file by hand. However, this can be much easier. As you probably already know, the Moodle learning platform offers the possibility of installing extensions. So why don't use the JSX Graph plugin? This filter simplifies the integration of JSX Graph constructions considerably. For example, it completely takes care of the integration of the latest JSX Graph version. In addition, there is no need to create a diff for the board. You only have to use the JSX Graph HTML tag. But let's have a look at the installation of the filter first. We have published some videos of our filter. One of them shows the installation process. I'd like to present you some parts of it now. This video explains the installation of the plugin. The JSX Graph Moodle filter is listed in the official Moodle plugins directory. First of all, you have to download the installation package. Therefore, open the website. You can search for JSX Graph by using the search field. The filter is available in different versions. Make sure you have always downloaded the latest filter to benefit from all new functionalities. To get the right one, please select on the right side the Moodle version you are using and then click on Download. We will need the downloaded zip file again soon. Now switch to your Moodle installation and log in as admin. In the site administration, select Install Plugins in the Plugins section. On this side, you could also go directly to the Moodle plugins directory and install the extension without downloading the zip file. However, a Moodle account is required. We now drag and drop the downloaded file into the field provided. After clicking install, the installation file is checked for the first time. Then the system requirements are approved. 
If everything is successful, you can jump to the next step. The necessary database entries are made here and the installation is then carried out. The display setting options can be left at the standards for the moment. The filter is now installed, but it still has to be activated under Site Administration, Plugins, Filters, Manage Filters. The global settings can now be adjusted here. As I've already explained, the Moodle filter searches the HTML of a site for the JSX graph tag. These occurrences are replaced with a div for the board. In addition, a unique ID is automatically generated and stored in the JavaScript constant board ID. The usual JavaScript code for managing the board and its content is then located within the tag. Let's have a look at an example. Here is a board with height and width of 300 pixels. Within the tag, the board is initialized with the ID board ID. Additionally, a point is created. After saving the label, you can drag the point like that. I've also prepared a short video to explain the correct usage of the filter. This video explains how to use the plugin. To integrate a JSX graph construction in Moodle, go to your desired location first. There you add an activity. Constructions can be integrated in almost any HTML-based element. A label will now be a simple example for us. It is very important that we always switch to the HTML view of the editor when programming JSX graph constructions. Only in this way the constructions will be displayed correctly in the end. Let's start by using the JSX graph tag. After saving, a box is already visible, but the board is not initialized yet. So let's go back to editing and use the following function call. It will be create a board with a grid and the specified dimensions. The filter automatically generates a unique ID for the board, which is stored in the constant board ID. There should always be an update of the board at the end of your JSX graph block. Within the JSX graph tag, you can now use JavaScript. The documentation of JSX graph can help you to choose the right commands. For example, the following code creates five points with six coordinates. The points are named automatically by JSX graph. It's also possible to use more complicated programming constructs, maybe a for loop. Be careful! Some editors convert special characters like more than or less than, which can lead to errors. Your admin may have to adapt global settings here. The finished construction can be changed by users. However, when the page is reloaded, the original state is displayed again. With these simple methods, you can integrate any complicated construction into Moodle. If you follow these steps, you can integrate any number of complex constructions into Moodle. Just have a look at these further examples.
Of course, it's also possible to integrate a construction into another resource, like a page. In our GitHub documentation, you'll find all global settings that the administrator can do. The latest version of JSXGraph is always supplied with the filter. But the administrator can for example load an older version from the server. Or he can type a default width and height if the user does not specify this in his tag. The user has several setting options via the attributes in the tag. This sometimes overrides the global settings. The JavaScript code that is used in the tag is automatically surrounded with an anonymous JavaScript function. Therefore, it's not addressable from outside. Thank you for watching. Much more information can be found in our documentation. Thank you very much for your attention. This is how the JSX graph Moodle filter works. Now my uh, co Mark Bernard will show you how to use the JSX graph together with the question type formulas. For this case, an additional library is supplied with our filter. So Mark Bernard, it's your turn. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Mar Bernat, and I'm going to talk about the formulas and this graph. Um, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for your presentation. And I'm going to explain uh, uh, formulas question time. Formulas is a ten years old question type maintained now by Dominic Bauer. Uh, Dominic has created an excellent website where we can find a nice documentation about the plugin. Uh, thanks, Dominic, for your job. And uh, now, in order to start the presentation, uh, we go to the first quiz, Introduction to Formulas. And now we have the simplest uh, formulas question. We have to solve an, uh, an addition. We can solve and then check. But the, the important thing is here in question settings. Uh, first of all, we have to create the variables. Um, the most important thing about formulas is that uh, in every attempt uh, we have a random variables. Uh, in this case, we have an and b to one and ten, and b the eleven to twenty. And here in the part one, we put the we put the answer. And the parse text uh, we write uh, inside curve inside curve uh, brackets and the addition. Okay. Okay. And now we're gonna what see some example that combining this graph and the the formulas question type, uh, as Andreas has explained, uh, the first of all is to uh, put the this graph tag with the size of the board, and now uh, then we have to declare declare the the board. It's clear, and the most important thing is uh, in this instruction. Uh, we create a function graph. Uh, for example, uh, this would be a simple, simple function. 
and here we are getting the uh, the formulas available okay now uh, we are going to solve this okay minus x check okay the second the second example it's more interesting because here we are binding the the formulas fields with the this graph in this case we have to use this slider to um, uh, represent the the graph in this case it's uh, again uh, minus one uh, here in question bind input we are binding the the first field that it's zero to the uh, slider value okay it's the same example that the first question. Okay. And, and it's important, I don't say it, it's important to, for use the question bind, it's important to include this option, the extension formulas. Okay. And now the last question it's um, we have to drag the red points for represent uh, this this function as I I explain it of uh, as I explain it uh, this is binding the formulas fields with the with the question with the with the this graph you know we if we um, drag the red points we can see that the fields are updating at the same time and now if we we can we can uh, change this field and in the this uh, graph uh, are changing too. And we gotta check this and now we are going to return to the course. And now uh, there are uh, here there are some virtual experiments using this graph and formulas questions. There are two three three videos to represent that. Um, there are a lot of places where students can perform virtual experiments. Anyway, it's not usual the teacher could monitor student results. In our approach, the simulation is coded by these graphs and the results are monitored by formulas. Okay. And uh, now uh, I'm going to explain the diagnosis questions. Most of the diagnosis questions have multiple choice format, which is implied that guessing plays an important role. 20% uh, in five of those questions. We have tried to transform uh, multi choice questions into a formula, into a formula open question, drawing monitored by this graph. If we enter in the quiz, we can see there are there are two there are eight questions. Pirate, but pirate. Okay. The first question is a multi-choice, multi multiple choice question, and the second is the the same question, but it's a uh, this is using uh, these graphs and formulas. Okay, we have to to solve this graph, and it's not the same uh, to represent a graph that uh, only uh, choose an option. It's it's better 
uh, represent a graph. Okay. And now um, we are going to authoring area. Uh, everyone uh, can access to the authoring area. The enrollment K is G6 2020. Uh, okay. Okay, this course is for for modify some these graph questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to go to the question bank. Okay. And here uh, there are uh, three examples. In order to modify one of them, we have to duplicate this this or or the last one of the slider. For example, I duplicate graph to equation. And the one important thing is when I duplicate a question, okay, I have to put my, my name here to recognize. And now it's uh, your turn. Uh, we can uh, modify the first example. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, we can create another variable and put it in the GIS graph. In GIS graph code. Okay. For example, for preview, for preview this. Now there are two variables. But anyway, the, the most important thing is that all the participants enter in the question bank and create an, uh, and create uh, your your questions. Uh, yes, you can, Martin, you can download it uh, if you enter in question bank. Uh, here in uh, edit, you can export as model XM L, but uh, as Andrea has explained it, you have to install correctly the Gscraft filter and the formulas question plugin. And uh, that's all is your turn to create the questions. And if you have any question, uh, type in the chat and I try to, to, solve, to solve it. Uh, thank you very much. We want to invite you all to in, uh, to author some questions in the question bank. If you have some problems, just use the chat or uh, unmute your mic and uh, we will uh, here for help. There's a question, are the example questions available somehow? As Mark Bernard uh, showed. Um, yeah, but they you are, don't have the right. Sorry, can you, can you? Maybe we don't have the rights to access the question bank because I. Uh... You first you have to enroll the 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 to the answering area. Uh, the enrollment key is in the link is, this, X twenty twenty. The link of in the question bank is. It's at the.
so I think I am in the question bank. So, ah, okay. Uh, yes, Burhat, uh, if there are um, options to, to debug the, the question, I'm going to share my screen again and I will show you. Okay. For example, if we go to the So this question uh, has uh, the, the book mode to activate the, the, the book mode. The, the book mode is only the, to show the, the, the input fields and it can uh, here. When we are create a new this is question, the third parameter um, by default is 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 it false, but it if we said to the true uh, to true um, when we view the the question, we have the four fields here, but if we have to we we want to hide the the fields only we have to remove the third parameter and now the input fields uh, are hidden okay um, thank you so much, Mark. That is that is a very helpful feature, and also thank you for your introduction. Wonderful. Uh, like my question is, when the construction gets a little bit more complicated, and I'm, for example, editing something, and I make any mistake, for example, a bracket mistake or anything, then suddenly, or I don't, I don't, let's say, declare a variable or anything like this, then suddenly I get a white screen or the construction doesn't finish and then how do I find where exactly um, like the mistake is I mean is there a kind of debugger or something I mean okay. I, if you have a, an error in the code it's, it's your it's your question if you have an error in the code yes yes okay. I okay for example I gonna in this, um, for example, uh, if I put an uh, one variable that yes. Yes. not yes. declared, yes. for yes. example, yes. thirteen. This okay. Now. My, uh, I click in the specter element and I go to the to the console, and now uh, my error is is here. Uh, I click in on this link, and here is my my error. This is your question. Yes, that's exactly. So I didn't know like the steps how you do. Like I, I try to find it in the console. So what were the steps again? You inspect the element, and yes, then uh, right click and inspect element and um, choose the console tab. Yes. And here it's a very it's a very good tool because, for example, well, it's only for error. And now, if you have, if you know to use the console dot log uh, function, you can uh, you can show, for example, uh, many uh, uh, variable values here. You put yeah. so the question like, how do you know the lines? Like, what you are clicking exactly? Like in the left, you had like ten. Ah, okay. The code uh, like. 
which one to click because I didn't I didn't know how to get to my proper code. Okay. Um, when you have an error, uh, you have to to go to the attempt.php because um, it's uh, it's your code. Okay. Then the error is uh, in other, for example, this is uh, tell you that the error is inside uh, here and here, but the 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 error specifically it's uh, okay. Always Thank on you. Your, on your code. Thank you. That's exactly what I needed. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Mark, there's an additional question in the, in the Moodle forum of the course, of the, of the conference course. So define the right answer. Or maybe Alona, you can, you can uh, uh, speak about your question. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, pretty familiar with uh, uh, JavaScript. What can I do with it? But I just didn't get what have I put in the um, uh, field that define correct answer. Actually, I have a little problem because um, you model I use uh, it's adaptation in Hebrew. I don't know, have no idea how it's in. Uh, um, in English, it's something like element of uh, answer one, and I can select here a, a number or formula, and um, then I have a field, uh, right um, uh, uh, answer, and I have to put uh, there some some something. If I have a number or variable that uh, I previously previously defined. Um, uh, um, uh, as a variables, I, I know what to do, but how can I just uh, put it uh, in correct uh, way um, in case to be able to uh, to check the formula itself? I gave a few examples for, for formulas and uh, that I wonder to to, to, to it's a very simple. Uh, I think it's very simple uh, uh, example should be. How, what should they uh, write in the, uh, this field of correct answer in case to be able to, to check uh, three or four formulas I uh, wrote there? Can I answer this question? Yeah. Uh, Bernard, is it okay with you if I answer this question? Anyway, anyways. Um, Yes, maybe you can address your question on the uh, Moodle uh, quiz forum. Uh, I'm answering questions every day about how to use the formulas question. And uh, usually uh, I'm uh, trying to help out uh, the, the, the person who, uh, who asked the question. Uh, there, I've answered many, many, many questions. And uh, you, you're welcome to ask your question on the, on the Moodle uh, the Moodle quiz form, and I, 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 surely I could maybe help you out uh, with this. Okay. Uh, if you have if you have questions about how to set up the the answers and, and, and that type of questions. Okay, thank you. And uh, if I may add, uh, what I do on the on the forum is uh, is is um, usually when there's a, a question of that nature, I, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe answering to Martin Kraska, who says, uh, well, he's wondering if he wants to try, you know, why would he want to try uh, the formulas question? And the formulas question are very nice for. As I said, for any engineering or scientific questions, I mean, I'm in engineering myself, so I, I use it a lot for for the courses I teach, which is uh, structural engineering, and um, 
as I said, one very, very nice thing about the, the question is the ability to generate data, random data very easily. And also, it also has uh, many other uh, good aspects. But uh, if, you know, you're welcome to um, uh, ask about a specific problem, maybe, and I, I can help you out on how to how to do it with the formulas question. So even if you only have a the statement of the question and no idea of how exactly to do it with the formulas question, I, I'm ready to give you a hand on how to set it up in uh, set it up in the formulas question form. So if you want to try it out, and uh, you'll see that uh, it's very powerful and you know good for you if you like it. Uh, thanks a lot. Actually, I already uh, put this question in discussion. It's in uh, this the discussion. It's uh, written there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, what discussion are you talking uh, talking about? Uh, the, the the conference discussion or or the Moodle? Yeah, form? yeah, yeah. A conference discussion. I just yeah. uh, started the topic. Okay, but also, yeah, okay, I can look at it, but uh, surely, but if, if you put it on a Moodle quiz form, it'll also be very useful to many other people that, you know, there's uh, so many people that attend the conference, but I think it'll get a much wider audience if you put it on a Moodle quiz form. Okay, thank you. Okay, in order to uh, view more examples, we can go to the... to the application section and we... for example, we could see the, the motion graphs animation. Okay, but I think it's more interesting that uh, you enter in the question authoring area with the enrollment key, and then we enter with uh, a question bank. And there are the, okay, I see that uh, we are creating new, New questions. Okay. Okay, this example is the, if we go to the GitHub documentation, here are, uh, this example are very, uh, very nice explained is here. You can check this and try to make some changes. But I think the most important thing to use the extension of formulas in the this graph filter is to understand the, the bind input that synchronize the field of formulas with the some elements in, in this graph. For example, here we are synchronizing the, 
the glider with the field, the first field. In this case, it's zero. Now, this glider is the red point, the first red point. And now, and it's binding to the first field. Okay, if we go back to the question and we put the debug mode, we can, we can see it. As I said, the if we change the number here, immediately it's updated on uh, on the board. And if I change the, I drag the red point, it changes here. Okay. Uh, if you want to modify them, we, you have to enter the question bank here and duplicate the original question, okay? If anyone has some question, 